What's going on, people? It's your boy, Malcolm Miller, man. I'm back once again, back with some very, very great news. Lovely news. If you're a Cleveland Cavaliers fan, if you're a LeBron James fan, Dwayne Wade, the former, former running partner, best friend of LeBron James, is now a Cleveland Cavalier on a one-year $2.3 million deal he just signed yesterday. Right? So I see a lot of people clowning and they trying to make all these jokes like, I got an old Dwayne Wade. He old as hell, all that type of stuff. Listen here. For $2.3 million, y'all not going to pick up a Dwayne Wade, who's a former NBA uh, Finals MVP, who just averaged 18 points per game for a bad team, which you couldn't really see what he really could do. The Bulls weren't that good. They made the playoffs, but just uh, they were like, what, 500 or 1 over 500, something like that. They weren't impressive last year. Um, I got this. Proven has championship DNA, who's proven himself time and time again in the NBA Finals, come up big. So you're not going, y'all not going to take him for $2.3 million. Y'all going to leave him out there because he old as hell. Get the hell out of here. Y'all be killing me, man, because y'all act like y'all wouldn't take him or he just there watched it. Nobody should touch him. Boy, listen, they got a bargain. They got D Rose for 2.1 and Rose just averaged, Rose averaged 18 points per game as a third option on the New York Knicks behind Carmelo and Christos Porzingis. Then D. Wade uh, averaged 18 points per game, playing behind Dwayne, I mean, sorry, Jimmy Butler. So, hey, what the hell? What, what you got to lose? What you got to lose, man? Listen, I feel like it's a great acquisition for several reasons. One, I already pointed out the championship pedigree that, he's, that he has. D. Wade, the one that taught Bronny how to win when Bron went to uh, South Beach in 2012. He don't, 2011. He showed Bronny how to get it done. And... He did it on his own in 2006, as we saw. And he can alleviate uh, LeBron James' defensive assignments. He can alleviate the defensive responsibility that Dwayne Wade, I mean, excuse me, that LeBron James has. No, Wade is not the defender that he, that he once was. At, he'll be, what, 36 this upcoming year. But at the same time, he still can play him some defense, um, a, proven, a proven leader. And honestly, I still think the dude can get you what? Uh, 13 points per game on his team, 12, 13 points per game, which is very valuable. Darrell Williams didn't give you nothing coming off the bench last year in the, in the finals. Uh, D. Rose going to give you something as well as Dwayne Wade. So I don't care what y'all talking about. I don't care if y'all somebody watched up. be old. It's an old roster. Listen, a lot of teams wish they can have Dwayne Wade for 2.3 and uh, D. Rose for 2.1. Golden State included. Yeah, they would have picked up. They would have picked up Wade and Rose. I don't care what y'all talking about. And I'm going to say it again. D. Rose is still a big-time guard in this league. Despite all these knee, surgeries he's, these knee surgeries he's had, to still be that elusive, that quick, and still be blowing past some of the premier guards in this league, he put up 30 on Russ last year, gave uh, Steph, what, 29, gave Kyrie about 28 last year as well. He just played for a bad team. The boy still can ball. Wade, he showed us good things in Spurs last year, in the NL playoffs and during the regular season. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. I like all these moves that the Cavs are making. They got Jay Crowder over there who is the primary defender for the Boston Celtics. He defended LeBron most of the time. He coming over there with LeBron. He's a threat from three. He hit uh, 188 threes last season, which is great. They needed somebody that's going to knock down them big shots because Kyle Corver, who's still on the team, by the, might I add, he didn't knock down them big shots in the clutch that the Cavs needed last year in the finals. Also, what they got Isaiah Thomas, who came off of averaging, tw averaging 29 points per game. He got the bad hip, so we're going to wait it out. I still think he's going to be productive and come in and be big time for the Cavaliers. But in the meantime, we got my young boy D. Rose, Poo from the crib. I'm taking Poo over any guard because he played in Chicago Public League basketball in the Red South. If you're from the shot, you know what I'm talking about. Anybody that came through that Red South or the Chicago Public League, period, they ain't no joke. They ain't no punch. The boy can ball. And you see it time and time again. Then, what else they got? They got um they added Jeff Green, who can be a reliable big man down um down low. Um, who else they added? They add, they added somebody else too. I'm trying to think. Who else did the Cavs add? Uh they added a big man. I'm not sure who he is. Uh honestly, I really don't know who he is. But I'm not I I mean I'm listen, I'm excited about the moves that the Cavaliers have made. You can't be mad at it. And they say, oh, they're trying to stack up their teams with old players. Look, look what the hell they got to compete against. They got to compete against that juggernaut out in the West. What you going to do to do to compete? You got to stack up your squad and, hey, see what's going to happen. Let the, let the chips fall how they may. 
But stack up your squad and get you a team that's going to be reliable. Hey, you got you a second unit coming off that bench. And you got you got to be excited about that. Wade, if he can start, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? If he can come, I really think Wade going to start and they're going to bring JR off the bench. JR used to be in a six-man anyway, so that's firepower coming off the bench. And he's a, well, no, JR has upped his defense a lot. I definitely would give him that. JR has definitely upped his defense a lot. And he's been a, a key contributor to the Cavs. This run, this three-year stretch that they had, especially when they won a chip. Because without JR hitting them clutch shots in the second half, uh, second in the second half of game seven in the finals, it wouldn't have been no championship won by the Cleveland Cavaliers. And no matter what Bronny and them did, JR hit some clutch shots. Um, I'm excited about the Cleveland Cavaliers' chances, man. Oh, look, I, I like what they're doing. They're making moves. They're getting players on bargain deals, and they're getting people to buy into what they're trying to get accomplished. Bronny, on his last year of this deal, he's trying to make some shape. And they're going to beat Boston regardless. I don't care what y'all talking about. It's over with. Boston not going. They can go to six games this year. Six games, seven games. It's still they still losing. It, that's how the chips gonna fall. They gonna lose. They gonna meet up with Golden State once again. Um, Golden State gonna have their hands full though with the Oklahoma City Thunder with the addition of Carmelo Anthony and um, with Paul George with Russell Westbrook on the team. So they gonna have their hands full. I still think they get into the finals. Though. I still think they get into the finals. Golden State get into the finals against the Cleveland Cavaliers once again. And listen. I know they got all them shooters over there. Golden State is a phenomenal team. Kevin Durant is one of the most extraordinary players I've ever seen. I said it when he was at Texas. I never seen no game like that for a big dude that can dribble and pull up and shoot at 6'10", 6'11". For his size, I think he has the capabilities of being the all-time leading scorer. If he don't get hurt no more, all-time leading scorer in NBA history. But he still ain't the best player in the world. That player is LeBron James. And if I got the king on my side, I'm riding with the king into the sunset because that dude the best player in the world. I'm going to ride with him. They got Golden State had the better, uh, the better team last year. But Cleveland still could have won. They still could have won, in my opinion. Golden State was just shooting lights out. And Cleveland, they had no defense for it, and they couldn't match it off the bench. When Brown went to the bench, it was over with. They couldn't run the offense. The, when you cut the head off the snake, they just unravel, which is why I don't think Kyrie is a great leader because when LeBron went to the bench, he couldn't make nothing shape. But now you got D-Rose coming in off the bench. You got a second-star unit coming off the bench, man. I, I, I'm liking what I'm seeing for real.